Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star, the city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition stream with the Dungeon Dudes. That's me, Dungeon Master Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, and I'm going to be playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joe O'Gorman playing Pluto Jackson, the human battlemaster. Tonight's episode of Dungeons of Drakenheim is as always, is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. They've sent us a fantastic collection of their premium metal dice to use in our game tonight, including these really awesome green and space black dice that I'm going to try out tonight. Uh, they are very cool. Uh, this is this die has not been rolled yet in anger, so we will see what happens <laughs> <laughs> with it. Please be nice. You can head on over to SkullSplitterDice.com to pick out a set for yourself for your next game and be sure to use the discount code ddudes that skull Slitter dice has so graciously set up for us so you can save 15 percent off your very first order with them uh and finally make sure that you check out their kickstarter right now which is still going i think so i think so i think so i haven't received my notification that it's done yet so there we go <laughs> yeah um or maybe i should check my email i don't know in any case Check out Skull Splitter Dice. We're going to be rolling with them tonight. And with that, we will return to the ruins. When last we left our heroes, after a series of tense infiltrations, negotiations, misadventures, and near disasters, bloodied and beaten with very few hit points remaining and low on spell slots, after slogging all the way across the city, over the walls, and into the Hooded Lantern's barracks, they have finally come to an accord. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, naps. Yay. Yay. Our heroes have broken their deals with Oscar Yorin, and he has fled in disgrace. Queen Lenore, the former monarch, one of the former monarchs of Drakenheim, is now secure in the Shepherd's Gate barracks with the Hooded Lanterns, and our heroes seem to have mended the broken relationship that they had with the Hooded Lanterns. As the day winds down, after all the chaos has been wrought, the gooped up ruins of Sten are wiped up from the street. Night falls, and you are able to take your well-deserved rest. <sighs> Reflecting back on your adventures of the day, you all level up! <laughs> Hooray. So our, our characters are now level seven. And what have you all picked up with your new level? Ooh, okay. So uh, Veo has taken another rogue level and now she has cunning action. Yes. Dun, dun. How are you going to decide what to do with all your bonus actions? Oh my gosh, there's so many options now between <laughs> Zephyr Strike, now dash, disengage, and hide. Uh, I'm going to see how it goes in the moment. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm excited for that. Yeah. Um, Sebastian has gained a fourth level spell and has decided to take Polymorph. Well, more so, Kelly has decided that Sebastian will take Polymorph. Sebastian doesn't know what powers he has yet, but mm -hmm. he feels more powerful and he will maybe turn into some animals or turn other people into animals. We'll find out. Yeah, I really like this idea that sorcerers don't really know what spells are going to manifest. I wanted to play into that more, that like a certain emotion is going to come out and mm -hmm. a spell that he's never cast before will just yeah. happen. And he's like, oh, I can do this now. Yeah. So we'll see how that works in. Yeah, I'm looking forward to, to seeing how that plays out. Uh, Pluto Jackson got smarter. <laughs> not, not really, though. <laughs> not really. Um, know my enemy. I can, I, I'm going to size everyone up and down 
and uh, determine if they are stronger or weaker than me in multiple different categories. Uh, and also I took two new maneuvers as a battle master, uh, maneuvering strike and or maneuvering attack and distracting strike. So I hope to give Veo all types of advantage <laughs> <laughs> on things. Look over here. Ooh, look over here. Uh, and, um, and let her run around and just keep murdering <laughs> everything. <laughs> The whole team dynamic is to let Veo murder. It's to see how <laughs> much it. it's to see how much damage uh, Veo can do on one attack, and every every attack is about beating the record from the last attack. I don't even know what our current record is like. It's in the thirties. Thirties. It's in the thirties. We'll say thirty. Yeah, we can get higher. That, that's <laughs> why attack myself when I can help Veo attack more. <laughs> so we're excited for that. Unsurprisingly. Sebastian, Paluto, and Veo, you have been permitted by the Lord Commander, alias Drexel, of the Hooded Lanterns, to stay in the keep of the Hooded Lanterns barracks, where the upper apartments have been converted over from their former offices, many of which have not been used since the heyday of the city, into a set of apartments for Lenore and those who will be protecting her. The, as the day dies down, the Lord Commander offhandedly says, I never thought we'd see the return of the Royal Guard in my lifetime, but all those who know the Queen is here, Ansem and Petra, I'm reassigning them formally to the Drakenheim Royal Guard. Though I think we have a couple of their old, uh, old blue and purple green line cl cloaks down in in storage, so we'll have to get those ones out. It's a good step forward for the city, I gotta say. My uh, uh, my plan going forward for all of you, the the Lord Commander says, is you're welcome to take a shift on guard duty. I don't expect Veo will be able to get you too far away from the Queen at this rate anyways. At least until I'm summoned away for other business to help put Drakenheim the way it was. I haven't been on guard duty in a really long time. I've never been on guard duty. I... Hmm. It sounds boring. <laughs> it's exceptionally boring, but the first night you're so exhausted anyways that I imagine beyond Veo... No, the two of you probably don't take up the offer. I'm, I am sleeping straight through the night. Good long mm -hmm. sleep. Having a nice nappy nap. I'm staying up and uh, thinking about my actions that caused <laughs> a certain face to melt. And I have to own that. I have to live with that. And I'm mm -hmm. over it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, over it. <laughs> Made it through. As long as you don't melt anybody else's faces. Yeah, learn love, from those mistakes. Yeah, I'm They've learning. already scraped Sten up. Nobody remembers <laughs> him anymore. Like it's, it's In the morning, you are awoken to the sound of Reveille from a bugle as they are playing the last rites for Sten down, down in the courtyard below. Pluto, they do still remember. <laughs> oh, they I for sure night. remember. You were trying to con like, um, console me? Yeah, I'm like, nobody will remember. Then the morning comes. And oh, boy. Petra says as as she heads out, Ansem's taking guard duty if you want to come out to the courtyard and pay your respects to Sten. We couldn't really scrape up everything, but we managed to get a little bit of him. We think it might be some bones, so at least his family has something. Okay. Is it an open casket? <laughs> no, but it's... At least one of the other Hooded Lanterns will take it back to his wife and children in Emberwood Village. Mm -hmm. Just think of it like he's been cremated. Oh, yes. You helped <laughs> speed up the cremation process. <laughs> yeah. Normally it happens when I started when it when dead. he was alive and perfectly healthy. <laughs> Down in the courtyard, many of the hooded lanterns are, are assembled in in a rough block <clears> as the... You can already overhear at the, at the distance the Lord Commander is just saying a few words. The last rite of the, of the hooded lanterns. It seems to be a a ceremony that perhaps in its heyday would have been a way of remembering one of the city watch who died in the service of the city. But 
it gives you an idea of just how few hooded lanterns there are. Many of them are arrayed in the courtyard, which there's a couple dozen of them, maybe no more than a hundred based on the group of them that are all lined up here and the others that are still tending to their guard posts. This is not a lot of people, but they all show that kind of grim determination on their faces as the Lord Commander speaks. Petra leads you forward and, and says, as the, the Lord Commander speaks up and says, with that, we'll take our breakfast together and if anyone of you would like to come up here to the platform and say your last words in Sten's honor, say some words in Sten's honor, Please do so. He served our city well. Should I open with a joke? <laughs> do you want me to, like, herald you in? Uh, maybe, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I present the gracious, humble, handsome... Murdering. <laughs> very kind Pluto Jackson. He's never laid a finger on any innocent people on purpose. There is not much applause from the assembly of the It's just him applauding. I, without further platform. ado, the great and mighty troll killer himself. You head up to the platform where the hooded lanterns are, are standing before, and on a small pedestal in a metal bucket <laughs> are what are ostensibly Stan's remains. You stand in front of the assembled hooded lanterns, Pluto. And they all eye you up. You've got this. Um, to Sten. His curiosity was only matched by his inability to <laughs> survive the goo. Um, we will remember you, Sten, for your uh, your your childlike wonder in poking things with your hand. I didn't know you long and I don't really know you now. <laughs> but what I would say is <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that curiosity killed the cat, am I right? Um, Make a performance check. <laughs> One. <laughs> Sebastian, at this point, he like turns to face the hooded lanterns and he starts. <laughs> and nobody. Solid one. Wait, with that, the Lord Commander just says, get off the stage. You didn't know him. <laughs> I walk away. So I, I walk away proud, but like knowing that I don't know what I'm doing. I shouldn't have been there. I realize a little bit of regret. Ooh, I shouldn't have said anything. There's a few others that speak. <laughs> And Pe as you as you come down, Petra says that was a little uncalled for, Pluto. I uh, I think I'm just a little nervous. Well, at least you said you were sorry. Thanks for whatever it's worth. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> Did I say I was sorry? A few other hooded lanterns get up. <laughs> Everybody said. And um, Petra says. We're going to take some time this morning to have breakfast and remember Sten. Take whatever time you need. I think the commander wants to meet with you all in the afternoon, though. Deal. Sounds good. I'm, uh... I'm going to give Petra uh, 50 gold pieces. And it's a, it's a um, college fund. For Sten's um, son or daughter. She looks down at the bag of gold and she says, This is a lot of money. I hope he gets into college. Or she. <laughs> or whatever they want to do. Maybe they want to be a bard. I didn't have anything against that. I didn't say there was anything wrong with that. You can't buy back his life but at least his family will have comfort for the time being. I'll take it to them. Thank you, Petra. 
Man, you could have bought so many things with that money. It's uh, it's it's the least I can do. That was a good uh, gesture. There's, there's less that you could do, but oh, I yeah. see I see your point. Good gesture, but uh, I mean, not throwing the goop would have been a better gesture. <laughs> okay, all right. But I, I, stole, I it. spilled it. That's what happened. We'll go with that. <laughs> I'm, it was like a. It's like a. Like a oil crisis thing, where I'm taking responsibility, but like it kind of spilled on its own. So like I'll take, but it's like really not my fault. You didn't like, tell Stan to poke it. Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. My important question: How's my hair situation? Your hair is starting to grow back. But like, it, does it grow back quickly or at a normal rate? It's growing back at an accelerated rate. Good. It's like by buzz the, cut. By the end of the day, yeah, I will it's look like, like a buzz cut again. right now. Weird. Yeah. yeah. My the- minor illusion. Nice hair. (laughs) So, you receive word that in a few hours, the Lord Commander plans to meet with the three of you again and Lenore to discuss next steps. How do you want to pass the afternoon? Um, I want to sit down with both of you and just kind of... Reflect on what we've what we've done so far. We've done a lot since we've been here. You want to hang eat. out on the wall and I like want... kick our legs over the edge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'll come, but I I had very important plans this morning. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, I was going to look for a nice lounge chair and read my mom's uh, spell book. You can read your mom's spell book while we're on the wall kicking our legs. Yeah, that sounds like a nice place to lounge. Let's and do it. I would love to see if there's anything I can learn from your mom's spell book too. Yeah, I have no idea how to read spells. I only was in school for a little bit. I'm sure if we put our heads together, we can figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure something out. Yeah. Cool. So you head up to the battlements of Shepherd's Gate. Kind of sit up on the crenellations themselves, overlooking the city. One of the high towers of the, of the fortification. It's not quite the same as the view from the clock tower. But it gives you a pretty good perspective of, of both the, sur- the area outside the city and this part of town and a clear view towards both the the cathedral of saint vitruvio and towards queen's park and the tower of the amethyst academy the castle of drakenheim looms in the distance as does the other towers of the abbey of saint selena across the river as well and there's always still that glow from the crater even in the daylight We've we've been through a lot so far since being here and I'm interested to see where this all leads. I don't know how Drakenheim's gonna end up. Are you worried about the big fight? A little. I'm more worried about what happens after the fight and if something happens where, you know, a, a faction gets hold of the city. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when the monsters leave, someone's got to take space, you know? So it's, we, we get to kind of, I guess, decide. I think so far. A little bit? I mean, as long as the paladins have stu- have said they're not going to burn down all of Drakenheim, they seem actually like decent people. The Hooded Lanterns, although a little aggressive, are fighting for the right cause. The Amethyst Academy, I mean, I I grew up with them. I don't quite know what their goals are yet, but they had a place in the city before. They taught me to harness my powers, and I, I respect them for that. They've they've done a lot for me. So I We don't know much about the cult of the falling fire though. They seem like nice people when we helped them. They though. seem nice, a little crazy, but they kept talking about heroes coming back to Drakenheim, and I mean you're here. <laughs> We're here. That's true. Mm-hmm. You're a hero too. Really? And what if what if they? I like that he did. They <laughs> they could be guided. Yeah. Like maybe they just maybe they just need a little bit of a nudge in the right direction, and they can be a great thing for Jack and I. So what we've decided is we're on the side of all of the factions, except the Queen's Men. Yeah. And the Knolls. Are the Knolls a faction? 
No. They're more monsters, but... Oh, monsters you know how you, can be factions. They, well, I think I'd be worried about, you know, yeah, I could do without gnolls and minotaurs and stuff. But rats, the ratlings, they got to stay. We got to make sure we make a house home for them here. Do you think anybody in Drakenheim, any leader is going to let us keep the ratlings around? I mean, sometimes you don't have a choice when rats stick around. Like a lot of the time... You just don't get to choose. Rats we'll just, just are around. The sewers. Like I've had rats in Caspia for years. We've tried to get rid of them. Like they just don't go away. Talking rats? No, regular oh. rats. So I could assume talking rats are much more <laughs> difficult to uh, upend yeah. and relocate. They also kill more people. Mm-hmm. But they can that, be reasoned with. I mean, slash scared into. Can they be <laughs> reasoned with? If we let the rats take the sewers, is the new Drakenheim going to have occasional rat murders? <laughs> Like, or rat gonna... merchants. You just have to balance how many rat murders are we okay with. I'm up to like a dozen a year. <laughs> I'm probably good with a dozen. That's like one a month. That's like pretty good numbers. More adventurers die to trolls every day than yeah. uh, ratlings. Sometimes so. you're not wrong. It's just you should just know not to go near the sewers. That should just be... Don't go in the sewers. Don't go near the sewer grates after dark. But what if they need maintenance? Should the ratlings be the maintainers? This is is a very deep conversation. (laughs) I think we need... need (laughs) As you have this deep conversation (laughs) about how the ratlings may impact the future economics of the city of Drakenheim, one of the Hooded Lantern's pages comes and says, it's time for our meeting with the Lord Commander. Oh, wow. We spent this whole time talking about ratlings. Uh, (laughs) They're very important to the future city of Drakenheim. But I guess we should talk about the now city of Drakenheim with the uh, commander. And we have a null problem. Actually, we have many problems. Let's go discuss. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) We have a lot of problems. Back in the main keep, one of the upper floor offices has been converted into a meeting room that the page leads you to where Ansem, Petra, several of the other new newly minted royal guards who are wearing uh, kind of these blue sea green cloaks with gold trim are all speaking. And seated at the head of the table is Lenore. She has found a rather striking dark purple gown that she is now wearing that complements the porcelain mask that she wears over her face. And it has this very wide brimmed purple hat that she's wearing on on top. Where these clothes came from. (laughs) But she rocks it. My lady, you look amazing. Thank you, Vale. She says, behind the porcelain mask. The Lord Commander is at her side, and he has a bunch of papers in front of her. It seems like as you came into the room, he was trying to tell her what's happened over the past 15 years. And even though you can't see the expression on her face, it seems like she might be terribly bored by the whole thing. Hmm. Um, as you come into the room, the Lord Commander turns to you all and says, show your proper honors for our queen. I kneel. Your majesty, and I bow. And I say, my lady, your majesty, and I do a deeper bow (laughs) than Sebastian. (laughs) Thank you, she says. <laughs> I plank. I plank on the ground. The Lord Commander has done a very good job of trying to explain to me the situation of our city. But I must say, the haze in my mind makes it difficult to really fully understand the gravity of what's gone on. Nevertheless, I thank you three, and I thank you, Lord Commander. It seems that there have been some disagreements, but you've all had 
the interests of the city at heart. I worry... It seems that the doctor fled, and the Lord Commander tells me he is not to be trusted. But he was treating me, and he has brought clarity to my mind. I want you to know that, that despite any misgivings you might have had with that man, he did what you asked him to do. My queen, if I may say, he may have given clarity to your mind, but he actually was using you for his own, his own terrible deeds to try to experiment on you. Of that, I have no doubt. When you find him, I want him taken alive so that I may issue the stay of execution, the sentence of execution, myself. I'm gonna change my to-do list here. Murder <laughs> Oscar is now kidnap Oscar? <laughs> okay, I can work the with Lord that. The Lord Commander speaks and says, our queen may need continued treatment. The first question, is do we ask the Silver Order for help? Yes. We did already tell them that we have the Queen, so that's not a secret. And we did already suggest bringing the healers in to look at the Queen. So that's that has been laid out. So it seems like a valid option. Lenore speaks up. I don't recall asking for your opinion on the matter, Lord Commander, nor do I... Re think I need the opinion of you three with respect. I would like to see the Flame Keeper. Mm. As you wish, my lady. Apologies. My lady, I have... Beg pardon, madam. The Lord Commander says. Yes? I have a question. If the Flame Keepers cannot do what you wish them, we have a secondary option to go with we do we do potentially I mean, the amethyst do. academy might be I able see. to but i don't know what your opinion is of them milady they're strange and they often want much in the way of money for their services money that i suspect we do not have access to right now through the treasury the Lord Commander shakes his head. No. This is a shame. They were a good resource years ago when we could be count on being able to afford their sight. I would like very much if they would be willing to find out where my children are. Something I think we can look into, potentially. But I'd like to keep them as a backup just in case these flame keepers don't. I'd like to have a plan B because I think mm. your health is of the utmost importance. Indeed. I am to understand that you are planning some sort of military engagement, Lord Commander, to retake the outer reaches of the city. And you three plan to be involved in this? Yeah, we're going to help. We're probably the crux of it all but yeah well brag i will leave matters of security and military to you and the lord commander you pluto jackson we have a matter of state to discuss when your meeting with the lord commander is complete please see me privately yes your majesty with Pluto. Privately? That is correct. He is a prince of Caspia, is he not? Yes, yeah. my queen. Uh, okay. Well, All right. Then we will convene only as heads of state and their representatives may. Guys, it's just, it's like, 
I'll probably like get a ceremonial dagger. I uh, will probably write some some I want signatures a on dagger. a on a piece of paper. You know, like like political stuff. It's boring. It's boring. Yeah, I'm not what I'm not one for politics. But that what business? No, wait. I can't really ask the queen that. That's her. She's not going to answer me. Okay, Your, Your Majesty. I think coming us together as a group, we should know what our next plans of action are together. No? No, Veo. I will confer with Pluto Jackson privately. As you wish. In the meantime, do you have any of my flowers? (laughs) (laughs) I think we gave Oscar. The rest. They're they're all gone at this point. But we can get more. We could get more. What are those crystals that I've heard about? They're very pretty. I'd like a few. We can find some for you. Mm -hmm. Not delirium. delirium. Well, we we don't have any now. But it is hard to come by. But we'll do our best. I think we can work on the flowers. Mm. We can get some more flowers. The flowers, yes. We'll get you Those nice crystals were so beautiful, I must say. <laughs> they sing, don't they? I can hear them. It's like a little chorus all across the city. They kind of do, yeah. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very I drank a bunch of it. <laughs> yeah, <like. laughs> they do, but... <laughs> when I drink one of the, the potions, I hear singing. They also turn rats, mutant, and monsters Mm. And apparently humans Stronger. as well. So I would no caution offense. you, my lady, based <laughs> on just... our experience with them. Yeah, we've... Just be cautious yeah. because they can do more harm than good. I know myself and my own caution, and I thank you for your counsel, Veo. Vale. I for. would like to have some of the flowers and crystals, please. The sooner you can bring some to me, the better. We will put it on our checklist. <laughs> right at the top. Right well, at the top of the to-do list. I will take top. my leave. <laughs> you may discuss your matters with the Lord Commander, and I will see you shortly, Prince Jackson. Uh, yes, my lady. Thank you. I bow again. Another with that, she stands up and leaves, <laughs> ta- wi- taking a gate that almost seems to float as she leaves the room. So poised, so beautiful. Pluto Jackson. As she leaves the room, the Lord Commander says, I'm glad to have her, but she's going to complicate things greatly. Commander, we can't give her any delirium crystals. That's that's a no-go. That's a no-no-no. No, no. How flowers. can we lie to her? We can bring her other crystals. She knows. Listen, what it... if we bring her delirium, the last time we gave it to her, it sank into her hand and then her eyes started glowing again. Yep. But she has the cool visor now. And we didn't say that we, we said we would try. We'll do our best. Do you have any of those flowers? We know where they're, they are. They're in Queen's Park Garden. We, I think we got, we ran out. But good luck getting them back. It's a or... bit nasty in there. So. She's making a lot of demands. <laughs> And I am very conscious of keeping up with them because if she gets angry and opens up that mask. <gasps> oh, yeah. But yay, Queen's back. Yay. 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 We have to be cautious of. <laughs> Three we crows. have to understand that she. Van the Pussycats needs to understand <laughs> um, that she's still in a mind of, yes, a uh, functioning uh, mind, but. She's still not herself, and I think we still need to realize that as much as she demands, as much as she is the queen, we have to make sure that the safety of the city goes first. And if she's mm. busting out lasers out of her eyes, that's not safe for anyone. I think we need to I find agree. her children. Yes, I would say that would be a primary, and it's the goal that she gave us. It's the yeah, technically that takes precedence over flowers and crystals. She gave us that first, and the flowers might buy us some time. I they, agree. I feel like they're less dangerous. Maybe. We've gone through Oscar Yoren's lab, and it does seem like he has a few more of the left behind a few more of these doses of whatever he was giving the queen. Should we continue giving her this or not? No. 
Yes. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I mean, Vea, so. what do you think? I think what? that, remember what he said? He was trying to turn her into something. And I think those doses were changing her. He was keeping her head clear, though. But that's why we want to get the falling, uh, the mm. flame keepers in to s assess the situation, I think, first before giving her But a what dose. if her situation gets worse because she doesn't have the medicine in the time being? What if we... Split All I could recall was that he... Oscar Yorin said that she needed these doses daily. So if we stop... If we stop this, whatever happens is going to start happening again. Listen, I think if if you see her getting worse, then maybe give her one of those because at least it keeps her somewhat herself. At least a half dose. We're meeting yeah, with the Silver Order too. in two days. <sighs> Maybe half doses until we can find a replacement for Oscar. I feel like we don't have the knowledge to make that assessment. So just... Because I, I, I understand your concern, Veo. Yeah. But we also need to keep her alive. Oh, and darn. I'm worried about her going the other way if we don't give it to her. That is true. I mean, I took some notes from Oscar's <laughs> notes. Yeah. Can you go over those notes? See if there's anything that you can figure out, Sebastian. Delirium bad. You can take the next couple days to figure it out. It's fine. That's literally all the notes I have. I well, think we no, should, wait, there's a few more. We should be conscious of giving her more, I would say, at this point, in terms of not the serum that he's created, but delirium crystals, I would say, goes too far and will morph her into something that she is not, regardless of what she is now. In light of this, I'm considering inviting the Silver Order here directly to meet with us. I think that makes sense. Rather than the mill, she's safe and secure here. This seems like a good meeting place. Yeah, agreed. Having a few paladins walking around too might not be the worst for uh, morale. No, that would be terrible. I can't invite too many of them here in, in oh. the fortress. The, many of my men don't trust the Silver Order. Okay. But... We're going to, we're very quickly creating more problems for ourselves because of the queen. If we go ahead with assaulting Temple Gate, our forces are going to be depleted by that attack. Even if it goes well, we're going to lose people. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be stretched thin because we're going to need to hold here to protect the queen where we're holding her in the keep and hold on to whatever ground we gain in the city. Even with the Silver Order, there's less than 400 soldiers between the two, between our two organizations. Defending whatever we hold is going to be really difficult. Yes, we can strike deeply, we can attack, we can slay things, we can get anywhere in the city. But to hold ground in the city is another matter entirely. Because in addition to all that, we have people under our care. We have non-combatants that stay here in the keep and help keep us supplied. We need to have supplies. We need to find equipment. We need to scavenge everything else. We need to get messages out outside the city and see if we can garner some more support from the other nobles. And just keeping security here with Lenore. So do you have a solution in mind or something that we could take care of? I have two problems that I'm worried about. Well, three, maybe four. There, oh, there's lists of problems. We Let's can't trust the Silver Order, but there are known quantity. Mm -hmm. If the Amethyst Academy wants to do anything, we probably can't do anything about it. But the Queen's men, the followers of the Falling Fire, they're unknown quantities. And we don't know if the Queen's men know that Lenore is here. With Oscar running around, it wouldn't surprise me if that's where he went first. Mm -hmm. I think we can assume that they probably know by now. There is also the... Uh cell that I may or may not have unlocked during the kerfuffle with Oscar that uh, apparently some Queen's men may have gotten out. Did they know? Was was No, word was kept pretty tight-lipped. As tightly as possible, but 
I did we yell can't that one take room. the risk mm -hmm. that our enemies don't know. We have to assume that they do. This means the Queen of Thieves claims that she is the Queen of Drakenheim. She's not going to stand for there to be a real queen. Uh, I've worked as a bounty hunter for a long time. Is this what you're asking? Are you asking us to take out the Queen of Thieves? If I was the Queen of Thieves, I would be biding my time until our attack on Temple Gate. And that's the moment that I would strike. And try to kill the Queen. Who knows? Okay. We don't know if she's going to... If the Queen of Thieves will try to kill Lenore, kidnap her. He, she might not even go for that. She might try to sabotage the entire operation on Temple Gate. She could pull off uh, any sort of distractions, lure any sort of monsters. Yes, a gang of thieves isn't going to do much in a fight directly, not against us. But there's a lot of damage that they can do just by working in the shadows. That's what I'm worried about. We have two days before we meet with the paladins, and then probably a couple more days to prep for the battle at Temple Gate. During that time, we could try to infiltrate. Do you, is this are you are you aiming more for infiltration and information, or are you aiming for us to strike and try to take them down from within and cure the city of the Queen's men? Infiltration or assassination? As far as I'm concerned, yeah. the three of you managed to infiltrate my barracks, cause a bunch of chaos here in my own garrison, and almost walk, got out of this with Lenore in hand. Yeah, we did. And that's when we were being nice about it. If there's it. anyone that's capable of causing chaos in someone else's organization, it's you three. And I'd rather see the three of you directed against one of my enemies than back against me again. That's totally fair. That's and what we're again, here for. I'm really sorry about Sten. Stop bringing it up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> People will forget it. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to be able to do about her, but I leave it up to you to make sure that she doesn't get involved in our attack. Now, what about the falling fire? <sighs> I don't know what to make of them. To be honest, I don't. So they seem like a bunch of normal folks following a bunch of gobbledygook to me. So far, they seem pretty passive. They believe in heroes. That, between oh, the two of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys do. I can count on the Queen's men being up to something. I don't know what to make of those folks at all. So you would say the Queen's men are the priority? I'm saying the Queen's men are definitely going to be a problem for us. Okay. Other than that, what benefit do we have of waiting? Is there any other reason why you'd want to wait for this battle? Unless you're growing fond of guard duty. As much as I love hanging out with the queen, <laughs> uh, I think I'm more set for uh, the field than the guard room. Mm, adventure. All right. I'm going to extend an invitation to Knight Captain Theodore Marshall and that flamekeeper, Ophelia Reed, to come to the barracks with their elite guard. push back the meeting by a day if you need it. Let me know how things are going. We'll need time to prepare anyways. If you're not back, I'm going to let the Flamekeeper see the Queen. I mean, if we're not back, that either means that something horrible has happened and we've caused a disaster, or it means we're dead. Or we've saved Drakenheim. Or we've saved Drakenheim. But well, you'll know that. You'll be part of that. Together. Hopefully you can. How will we get a message back? How would we? Yeah. If we do send a messenger, regardless it's of what one. form, <laughs> promise you won't kill them. Oh, they have Wait, to know. You're send one of your pigeons. Maybe. What if they know the safe word? What's our safe? What's our? We will. Whatever the messenger we send. Petunia. We'll say Petunia. Yes, we will say Petunia. And That'll we be will the try to send some um, candied salmon with them. In the midst of all this, 
Oscar Yorin's still at large, too. Uh, yeah. The queen wants him brought back alive. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it will, hopefully he doesn't put up a fight then. Yep. Yeah, it's really hard because he can teleport and stuff. Well, this time I'm not going to be nice about it. Like last time I, th I was trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. I thought we were going to talk it out and then he kind of just poofed out of there. Next time, mm. we won't mm -hmm. let him. Listen. Hmm. I don't know exactly where the Queen's men and the Queen of Thieves are hiding in the city, but I have a pretty good idea. Oh. Really? That's helpful, because we were just going to go wandering for three yeah, days we and hope for the best. literally going to go that way. Well, Normally isn't it good us. that I used to command the city watch? <laughs> yes. We do also have this map. I don't know if that helps, but it has some points marked. We found it on one of the Queen's men. Maybe it's, we can compare it to yours. He takes it to us. Yeah, that's Buckle Down Row. That's where they've always been. Years, things don't change. Meteor can strike this city, and the thieves still come back. <laughs> so, let me put it a short laugh. A <laughs> <laughs> couple years ago, a couple decades ago, this old thief, a guy called Ryan Payne, Comes out of the Elser Vale after there's a whole war down there with a bunch of hobgoblins. Sets up chop here. Now it used to be that the watch captains would go down to Buckle Down Row and they'd break up the gangs every couple of years. Someone would get into it. But they kept finding a honeycomb of tunnels under the sewers. And every couple of years we'd go down, break up the, the gangs, and brick up whatever we could find. But they're like wasps. If you don't get rid of a wasp's nest properly, the wasps, they all just come right back. And if the queen wasp is still there, then they're gonna, there's going to be more wasps. So what I'm hearing is fire. And I'm the insecticide. Oh. Yeah. Once in a while, years and years ago, Aldrich von Kessel's father gave the City Watch the funds to pay the Amethyst Academy to try to scry where they were hiding, and they couldn't do it either. The Amethyst Academy couldn't scry them? But yeah. we're going to find them. Well, who knows who might have paid the Academy off? Oh, I didn't oh. even think about that. I was going to say, imagine we can do it and the Academy couldn't. Put that in river space. Let's go. Yeah, Look at it. It's rubbing in her face, dude. <laughs> there used to be. Are we the exterminators? Times used now? to be that there used to be. Times used to be that there were. Well. A bunch of old warehouses, stables, taverns, and broken down businesses around Buckle Down Row that you might want to check out first. We've been around there a few times, mind you, in the years since. We come up with nothing, but once in a while I send some scouts down there and they don't come back. And we've seen the gangs congregating around there since then. So we know that's where the nest must be. But where exactly it is. This is getting some predatorial instinct in me really excited. <laughs> Are we going... Uh... Queen's thieves hunting. Go on, go on. The, the wasp killing. Wasp killing. Wasp killing. I would say rat hunting, but that would be disrespectful to the rats. Yeah. These guys no, they're are, wasps. Yeah, we, they're we now refer to them as rats. wasps. And we're the exterminators. Yeah. Or the insecticide. We're <laughs> the the fire. We need cool lines to say when we. Yeah, we're trying to. Them. We're just b spitballing. We, we want to right. sound confident and and intimidating. Like when we murder someone, we need to have a cool line to say. Yeah, it's important. There any? If there's any supplies that you need, you need a couple of potions. Yes. We can spare a few Ooh. ammunition. Maybe some more magic arrows for Veo if you have. Ain't got none of those, but oh, okay. Yeah. Potions would be great just in case. You yeah. know, we we tend to overstretch our. Uh, <laughs> of our time before we rest so if we can do it in one swift swing we try to do it yeah I don't have any potions well I mean not of healing alright oh really 
Petra, go get, fine. go prepare the stock. We'll see what we can spare for you. Thank you, sir. I get one now, thank you. You go talk to Queen. I don't want to hear any of it. Okay. I do. I do. <laughs> yeah, Pluto. Guys, it's it's honestly it's gonna be like she's probably just gonna ask me like about how things are in Caspia because I gotta fill her in on fifteen years. I'm more surprised that it wasn't Veo. Like I know it wouldn't be me. Me and the Queen have like nothing going on, but mm -hmm. Veo used to live in that castle. It's true. Well, yeah, Veo. I'm sure you can catch her up on Drakenheim. It's just uh, like a lot has changed in 15 years. Caspia is kind of like a, a shifting sands of, uh, of, of political turmoil. Um, when she was last in power uh, before the meteor fell, uh, I was quite young and things have changed quite dramatically. The, 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 the wrestles of power. Feo, do you want to go learn some magic? That would be cool. Can t How do you teach magic when it just comes to you? I don't know. I'm just going to show you what a mage hand looks like and see if you can make one too. That's how I figured it out. Huh. I just went, oh, my hand. I and guess. then there was another hand. So yeah. try that. Hopefully I'm not too distracted about thinking about your meeting. We'll get food. I'll let you guys know what we, uh, what we figure out. <laughs> yeah, good idea. <laughs> All right, we'll get food. I'll show you some cool magic tricks. What for lunch? All righty. With that, are you going to let Pluto go have a, this meeting with Lenore? Have fun, Pluto. Yeah. Tell us what you talked about after. Yeah. yeah. Alrighty. Just friends don't keep secrets. <laughs> See you two later. <laughs> Enjoy food. Oh, no, 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 no. Dun, 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 dun. I'm going to head up. As they walk away, I head upstairs to okay. Queen Lenore's uh, private chambers. You head up. Ansem's standing guard, and he lets you in. There's another guard that's standing watch in the chamber, and as you come in, Lenore turns and says, Little Jackson, is that you? Uh, yes, my queen. Be a dear god and leave us. Close the door tightly. I'm gonna. <laughs> Take off my helmet. Go over to her. You'll forgive me, Prince Jackson. For the mask, I mean, but I am to understand it keeps others safe. Uh, a necessary uh, requirement. Mm. I must say, it's very good to see that things are the way they've always been in Caspia. The men out running errands and the women back home running the nation. Uh, as it's always been, uh, my queen. Uh, we, we Caspians, uh, we have a, a duty to the, to the, to our people. And Indeed. we go out and we do, we, we do what we got to do. How are your mother and sister doing? <sighs> they are great. Thank you for asking. If I recall, your mother and I were playing quite the game of chess by post before all this happened. I wonder if all the pieces of our old game are still on the board. My hope is, is that we can pick up where we left off. Mm. Try to hit the ground running. You must forgive me. The haze of 15 years makes things very difficult to recall. I'm also to understand that my nephew is here in the city. Yes. Jupiter's a little bit of a headstrong young one, if I recall correctly. Yes, we still have our boyhood disagreements, um, but he is a strong and capable fighter. Tell me, 
your sister is still doing well. Yes, uh, Eris, she she lives, she stays in Caspia, um, and uh, you'll be happy to know that my nephew is doing well too. Your nephew. I'm really proud. I'm a proud uncle. What's the young boy's name? Named him uh, George. And is George a Von Kessel or a Jackson? Um, a Von Kessel, my lady. We'll need to prove it, won't we? That is my hope, my queen. This is why I'm here. Really? So you've come all this way, hoping to find the proof. We need to pick up where we left off. Mm, That's true. It's our only chance to stabilize Drakenheim and Caspia. Rather unfortunate timing, wasn't it? My son, Leonard, and your sister really hit it off, and it's a shame that they had to get things going before the marriage could be finished. Eris was always a little, uh, uh, how would you say, uh, spontaneous? Hmm. Um, but what is, what is the, the love of two young romantics? And so young George then was born after the, this whole thing happened. Yes. Um, I don't think he understands the gravity. Does he know? He... No. We've kept him slightly in the dark. All of the documentation, everything that my husband signed with his seal, me as witness, the seals of your mother and father, all of it, is kept in the Von Castle vaults in the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio. I was trying to make my way there, and I got distracted, and I had a bit of a rat problem. Uh, you've met my new comrades. They don't know, but they can help me get there. And... Once... You have this. What about the Queen Mother? Yourself? The... The rule of Drakenheim falls to you, my lady. And eventually, if we don't find my son or my daughters... A tragedy. It will pass to your nephew. Young George. And if the ca- and if your family can secure control in Caspia, then we have a mighty empire. A new dawn. The meteor is just a hiccup in the greater mm. scheme of things. This city is a beautiful place now, different than it was before. I have heard the Lord Commander say this is a cursed city, but I have trouble believing that. It's like a... an... the bones and the structure, the foundation is strong. Mm. We just need to do a little cleaning up, that's all. And with the help of these hooded lanterns, the paladins, if we can drive the monsters out, and take back the city, we can establish a great and powerful alliance between Drakenheim and Caspia. What was supposed to happen. This has been a 15 year long mission and it's, this might be our last chance. Very true, very true. I hope you're doing well enough to aid me in this. 
I hope so myself too. It would be very lovely if next time you see me, please bring me some flowers. I will try. Just like, uh, just like old times. Indeed. Well, I'm very glad we could catch up over this. It's good to see you. I think you were only a boy when I saw you last. Little troublemaker. Indeed. It's nice to see family and mm. I, 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 I feel a very uh, fish out of water in this city. And so it's, it is refreshing to see a familiar face. Well, we will just have to see that you make are the one to bring that paperwork back instead of your instead of my uh my nephew because indeed I could very much see it that if any of my daughters are still alive, maybe I could marry them off to Jupiter Jones and he could be next in line instead. I believe we can make the original accord work. And I will show you that Pluto Jackson isn't afraid to go into the depths of the city to find what is rightfully ours and to return it. Certainly. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. And with that... What next? Shall, uh, we, shall we go get the other two? Yeah, let's yeah, yeah. Like let's, let's, yeah. Let's. They they've been they've been uh, out of the loop long enough. Oh boy. This is a really great meal. <laughs> <laughs> Some good food in the the cafeteria. There, such friendly cooks. So I cast Mage Hand. Did you like it? It was cool, but I still am not very good at it. Try. No, that's not, that's not it. That's, <laughs> that's that's not it. That's oh hey Pluto. Hey, hey guys, what's how Pluto. was uh, how was eating? It was delicious, but I'm now curious, rubbing crumbs off my face. So, what did you learn from the queen? So, I have to be honest with you guys. She needs us to get into the cathedral. Yeah, does it have to do with our kids? Yeah. Yeah. Then that's our number one mission. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. It's. Uh, she didn't want to be too secretive about it, but I think she wants to keep the Lord Commander kind of in the in the dark on this one. Why? Um, why us as well, though? It's because she has limited trust with certain members that are not in a distinguished it, place. Me. I it's have, me, I it? have, it's you. See my ears it's, go down and I'm just like, <laughs> it's not to say what? that you guys, uh, this is strictly a political mishmash. It's all about, you know, like courts and wearing ceremonies and robes and stuff. Did you get your dagger? No. But what I do know is that there is really important documentation that could save Drakenheim. And it's in the cathedral. And we have to get it. That was always the goal. Yeah. Was we wanted to get into the cathedral first because we're looking. Is it like more than the um, will? last will? Uh, or is that what we're talking about? That's still? pretty much. But what's even scarier is that I think Jupiter Jones might be making a play for it first. When? I don't know. So we have to decide whether or not the the Queensmen, the Queensmen or the Will. I think. Like I don't want to say that they're unequal but this is the most important thing <laughs> no no the and we we do have to kind of keep a lookout for 
her kids too because they could be important. Although I don't disagree with the uh, commander's idea that having an enemy who might know... Oscar Yorn has escaped. And he used to have friends with the Queensmen. So if he goes to them and tells them that the Queen is here, that's a really big threat. So it's, it is it is a tough decision. I mm-hmm. think what if... I think the Queensman is like alarmingly now because I think the gate needs to go well but I think we don't necessarily have to be part of the battle of the gate I think we need to get to the cathedral before everybody well we we told uh the hooded lanterns and the paladins when we first laid out the plans that we would be the strike team to go in secretly into the cathedral and kind of like clear that out while they draw the attention uh out of there and I think with the queen being more on our side of getting that she will tell the Lord Commander that that's what we need to do. Do you think that's something we can manage? Yeah, I'm I'm also worried that if Jupiter Jones gets there first or finds one of her heirs. Jupiter Jones doesn't have an army of paladins and hooded lanterns. He has like a handful of men. One of them is, is Lem. <laughs> uh, that slows him down a little bit. <laughs> and what, is he going to take on the Lord of the Feast and an army of gnolls? With just his little squad of men, I don't, I don't think so. Is there? Do we know where Jupiter is right now? I don't know. Let's put up a big sign that says, "Yo, Jupiter, we want to fight IRL in Emberwood Village," and leave him hanging. (laughs) And just and yeah, just like that, we don't know where he is. I think. Well, also, could maybe the, um, maybe some of the scouts of the uh, Hooded Lanterns could figure it out as well we could also try to play him again maybe we can use him to try to get to it faster yeah do you think we can use him with the uh the thieves maybe because even if we can keep the thieves distracted with something that might be enough to prevent them bothering us during the attack Mm, i think we need to know where he is first yeah i think that's number one priority because It's only a priority to get there if Jupiter Jones is going after it. And we could use the Amethyst Academy to try to find Jupiter. Or we could use the Amethyst Academy because we could say that he's really a disruption to it. So if we can use some of their resources to distract Jupiter, then we can go for the thieves, then go for the cathedral, even while we're in the city, messaging the commander that that's what we need to do. But I think the thieves... We've got days before our meeting. Nothing's going to happen with the cathedral, or at least us even getting close to the cathedral, until that battle is going to happen. I also think that without the battle, uh, Jupiter doesn't stand a chance against the Lord of the Feast. And he's hanging out in that cathedral. We've already seen how he takes on trolls. Nothing compared to Pluto. So maybe we could... Yeah, he wasn't uh, very good at trolls. We could do like an infiltration on the Queen of Thieves. I was thinking, first thought, was one of us like pretend to be captured... We just get really deep in there, and then we set off the bomb. Because <laughs> if you want to kill a wasp nest, <laughs> if, like they keep, they say it keeps growing back, but how how concerned are we with the fact that the queen wants Oscar alive? I mean, I'm not too concerned. I mean, if he dies, the only thing I worry about is maybe her changing her mind to help get more delirium. He was helping her with that. Oh, yeah. Also, I kind of want to bring her flowers. Yeah, but oh, Queen's Park Garden. She, it's just to buy us some time, maybe. Number one mission, find her kids. If it happens to go by Queen Park, I would say yes. I know she wants her kids, but... Could we give her some delirium powder to, like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Just to, just to uh, tide her over? Yeah. Um, like, her kids are important, but she's the current ruler. Huh. And Caspia would recognize it. We just need to find this documentation. Okay. So when are we going to fit the flowers into this? Because that's, <laughs> that's the opposite direction that I know. we're, it, we're it, going. It's just that we, we should just keep it in the back of our head. The next time we bring in the queen, she's going to... 100% ask for flowers, delirium, or both, and we need one of those to give. Did she specify exactly which flowers she wants, or did she just say, she wants, bring me more of those flowers? She wants She wants the 
the special flowers, the, special the lilies. Flowers, the lilies. Did she say that? She. Implied I'm just it. trying to say, like, can we bring her some that. flowers? We don't want to seem incompetent. Yes, mm. that's a great way of putting it. Incompetent we know. is my middle name. We know. We know what she wants. <laughs> She's been feeding those flowers. Now, where is, um, in Buckle. terms of on the map, where's the, yeah, where is the, what is it, Buckle something? Uh, Buckle Down Row. Buckle Down Row. Buckle Down Row. Where is that on the map? Cool. Let's uh, take a look together. Let's pull up the map. Okay. Since we're being strategic about locations, if we're already close to the cathedral, we could not cool. be in the battle. So, as you know, looking at looking at our map, um, point eleven is the cathedral of Saint Retruvio. It's in the center of a large monastery complex um, in the in the temple ward of the city, and Temple Gate is at point four on on the map. And that entire area, the whole temple ward, is strongly in control of the vicious packs of gnolls. Um, so what you do know from this is that the Silver Order's goal is to take the cathedral as well. Mm -hmm. And to this end, given the number of gnolls in that area, that's why they want to attack in a large group. Some discussion has been floated that perhaps the attack on Temple Gate might draw away enough gnolls that you could possibly slip into the cathedral as well. It's going to depend on whether your ultimate objective is to capture the cathedral or simply get in and get what you're looking for. So what your approach will be is going to be up to you to decide. Now, the... Shackle down row, or sorry, uh, buckle down row. Sh shackle buckle, blah, blah, blah. buckle down row is off Champion's Way outside the city walls. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah. It's outside the city walls proper. So kind of heading towards Emberwood. Yep. In the spokes or no? In the spokes. Yeah. Yep. So it's on the other side of town. Mm hmm. Um. Do the sewers lead from the spokes into the city? Yes. Veo, as, as you can somewhat recall, much like in the sprawl, there are parts of the sewers that lead, lead in, but there were always rumors back in the day that there were smugglers' tunnels going from the spokes into the south ward. Because that's predominantly where most of the, the various criminal organizations operated out of in the heyday of Drakenheim. Mm. And those smugglers' tunnels were how they got past the gate taxes oh. and brought in contraband. So if the Queen's men are operating in that area, that would explain how they're able to get into the city. Makes sense. So if we can take out the thieves, at least we have another way into the city. It could provide, yeah. Especially on that south end, because... Uh, Just gotta be careful of the crater. Yeah, we've never been that close to the crater before. Nope. Nope. I think that we should move uh, outside the city if we're going over there. Yeah, definitely. Go visit... um, uh, Sticks? Sticks. I have a great distraction for Jupiter. <laughs> Market Square. Oh, send him to Market Square? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to go to Slaughterstone that... Square? Slaughterstone Square, yeah. sorry, yeah. yeah. Is, is that a cool. distraction or is that murder? Depends on if he tries to run away or... So what is your what is I your plan? Are, are are you three thinking you want to... Because I, I, I think I heard that you were floating the idea of even going right for the throat at the cathedral or going and dealing with the Queen's men. We could sneak in and go to the cathedral... Or we could deal with the Queen's men. Okay. Or we could go visit the Cult of the Falling Fire. There's going to be a lot more action around the cathedral. Thinking about our sneaking abilities. Pluto. <laughs> I feel that. If we you... can bring some gnolls away, I think that'll be more beneficial for us trying to sneak into the cathedral. So wait till the attack and then we can yeah. go in. Because yeah. Jupiter's not going to be able to get in without that either. Yeah, I think... And uh, then it'll be a race to the... If we can infiltrate the Hooded Lanterns, then we can infiltrate the Queen's Men. 
I have more disguises up my sleeve. Yeah. Maybe. As long as the getting into the cathedral is also a priority. Um, during during the attack, I think that's our main priority. I so we can bail on the attack and go. I think it's number one priority, but in order to set events into motion, in order for that to be successful, I think we need to go to the thieves first. Okay, I'm with you. Does that make sense? Yeah. That sounds good. I'm on board. Strategic planning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... Would you like to set out now or or stay with the Hooded Lanterns a little while longer? I say we go. Um, After we get our yeah. potions and yes. gear. Okay. A big thank you to Axe and Shield for generously providing us with some of the accessories that we use, such as the initiative tracker and flight stands that you may or may not see at some point. And uh, also to Tabletop Audio, who provides us with the awesome audio that you are hearing in the live stream. Tabletop and Audio has an awesome website that has ambient music and more for your game. It's all completely free <laughs> to use, so check it out for sure. Yeah, definitely. And uh, also to 100 Years Boar for the amazing narration that he provides us in the intro video. Uh, so thank you, 100 Years Boar. And, um, oh yeah, the most important part. Uh, if you are enjoying the show, please support our Patreon. You can find it using the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We have an amazing Discord community that is exclusive to our patrons, uh, including chat rooms where we you can interact with everyone on the cast. We talk about the show. We talk about D&D. We talk about life. It's been really, really fun. Uh, including a secret behind the screen chat room where all y'all who are interested in what just happened when I sent Veo and Seb Sebastian out of the room can talk to me directly about what just went on. <laughs> so, so many a lot secrets. Of, of course, Dungeons of Drakenheim is sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice, and we definitely want to get these awesome metal dice rolling shortly tonight. Make sure that you check out the skullsplitterdice.com website to pick up your own set of these awesome dice. You can use the discount code DDUDES to save 15% off your order at checkout. Nice. With that, let's delve right back in. Pluto, Sebastian, and Veo, you have resupplied, been given some rations, from new ammunition, any other minor supplies that you might need for the journey ahead by the Hooded Lanterns. And before you leave, Petra gives you from the Hooded Lanterns stores a potion of greater healing each and she says these aren't too much use to us because we haven't had a mage for a few years and she produces some spell scrolls that the hooded lanterns have been keeping Ooh. one <laughs> is a scroll of lightning bolt one is a scroll of greater invisibility. <gasps> and one, uh, and the, uh, the last one is a scroll of gaseous form. Okay. I'm going to need to write those all down. So that was Thunderbolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, uh, greater invisibility, greater invisibility, gaseous form. Awesome. Can I have the invisibility one? <gasps> we'll figure it out. We'll go. Can you read scrolls? Can I? Can you? I can do magic. Okay. Does that count? If this spell is on your class spell list. Oh, probably not. <laughs> and you're high enough level to cast a spell, then yes. Otherwise, you have to make a... Ca like, if it's not on your spell list, yeah. you have to make a check to use it. Hmm. Or if you're not high enough level and it's on your list, you have oh. to make a check to use it. I don't think it's on my list. It's probably and all you. Knowing me with scrolls, those will come into play near the end of the campaign when I remember I have them. <laughs> you're like panicking in some last minute boss. Oh yeah, I have like nine scrolls. <laughs> Read them all at once. I'm, I'm bad with scrolls, I, but I will try to make good use of them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't tell the commander <laughs> that... <laughs> Oh, I don't know how to use any of these. Yeah, I just <laughs> throw these in the bag, and they'll sink to the bottom, and we'll we'll come back to them. Yikes! So, with that, Petra, Ansem, and the Hooded Lanterns bid you fare farewell, and you are off into the ruins once again. Mm. Which route will you take? 
and where so you decided that you're going to head over to the spokes and investigate buckle down row yes. in search of where the queen's men keep their operation correct yeah so i i i think we should go around the outside yeah i think with uh it would be easier to do on the inside if it was closer but it's so far away like either way we're we're either cutting through the entire city um or we're going around the outside around the outside is going to take mm. longer but it's it's definitely like no knolls yeah. no slaughter stone square we've also gone there pretty quickly and I can lead us on a pretty fast route. We, we yeah. know the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. we're just basically going the same way we would go to Emberwood Village, but then further. Yeah. yeah. So, as you travel the way, I'm going to have all of you roll me 2d6. Oh, my and tell me the higher of the two numbers you got. Five. Three. Four. Okay. So... Remarkably, it's not raining today. Is this the first time? Perhaps. Oh. First time in a long time. In fact, the clouds are noticeably thinner than they've been in quite a while. I'm freaked out. Um, and I'm freaked out. as you pass through the city across the sprawl, the embers of the Silver Order's battles with the gnolls in this part of the city have left the city as you head south eerily quiet and the streets bizarrely empty. Drakenheim has always been a ghost town, but today it feels like one. Oh. And not in the haunted ruins, but in the abandoned. Like the outskirts of the city feel abandoned today. You see those wispies kind of go across yeah, the road? Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh... Yeah, especially with the light this much brighter, it's just bizarre. I feel like I can almost like hear more because I'm so used to there being like a pitter patter of rain that when there isn't, I'm like, is this what regular places sound like when there's no noise? It's too quiet and also way too bright. Yeah, ah. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, my eyes aren't adjusted to this. Put on sunglasses. Before long, you cross Temple Road and emerge at Styx's Ferry. Styx! The undead ferryman, as always, still there on his boat where you left him last time. Oh. And paying the, the toll, he rows you across the Dran River to the Spokes. I've never paid the toll. I just give him rocks every every time. <laughs> I give him a little, like, like a pinch of my rations. Cause you never know. He might be hungry. We haven't asked him if he eats things. I I did ask him. Did you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you land on the south side of Drakenheim and make your way through the spokes towards Buckle Down Row, how are you going to approach from here? Buckle Down Row sounds so inviting. It actually sounds like a really nice place. Like, it sounds very welcoming and warm, so... Um... I don't know if I'm <laughs> projecting a lot onto it, but I walk right in. <laughs> no, no. You, you walk right in? Nope. I say we approach with confidence. Yeah, I th I feel like... Should we disguise ourselves? Th th if you... Like, the best I could think of is, Veo, you hiding off to the side... And me and Sebastian doing the old walk in because they all hate us and know us and have seen us and we've murdered some of them and some of them got away time so they know who we are. Should yeah. we put the bandanas on just for like that three seconds where they're like, "Wait, are you?" Uh, oh, <laughs> wait, no. Yeah, let's do it. Let's you know all what, wear though? bandanas. I'm thinking that. Um, Do you wear it on your arm? I have. Well, they kind of wear it. <laughs> I'm like in a couple it around places. my head. You're like they wear it on their arm. I'm even thinking if if I have hide off in the shadows, I need help. <laughs> and uh, if I hide off in the shadows, and uh, I can always come in. It's the wrong arm. Have it wrapped around my arm with a disguised self and pretend to be human veil. I could be human veil. How you are you guys? <laughs> 
Is that how humans talk? This is human, human talk. Uh, I, want, I want human veil. <laughs> human veil is uh, catches us. I mean, can human veil like? If they start to see who you are, I could come in and be like, "There you guys are, <laughs> matey." <laughs> That's how humans talk, right? Yes. I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> you're nailing it. Sweet. Yeah. I mean, I'm a half elf, so I don't talk. Like I just have oh to my talk gosh. like less intelligently. I feel like that's how don't humans purr. Talk. Just don't purr at all, and I think you'll be fine. <laughs> They're like, what did? The, what was that sound you made? I mean, oh, I said, I love money. <laughs> Grrr. <laughs> okay, wait. What's uh, so our plan is human veil, but wait, what? <laughs> I'm just saying, if you guys need me to come in and act like a distraction as a thief, I could. Because I can kind of change myself over. I won't. Okay, so if we are found out, we'll be like, oh, we're actually captives, and our captor <laughs> is taking a leak. Yes. And then you can walk out and be like, glad you didn't run away on me. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so you're going to use disguise self to disguise yourself as a human? May, may, if they get into trouble or because I don't want to just come in as maybe myself <laughs> I'll gauge the situation Veo, buckle down row is marked on the map that you recovered from the hooded lanterns mm -hmm. or not the hooded lanterns the queen's men that you slayed several yes. weeks ago in this campaign and sussing it out through thieves can't you can see that there are several markings on it that you realize indicate the names of three taverns that used to be in this area. One called the Snake and Mongoose, another called the Slaughtered Lamb, and a third called the Split Skull. Oh. Well, guys, I think it's obvious that each of us goes to one of the bars. <laughs> Split the party. That's a, that's a good idea, right? It worked for you before. Yeah, I can't. It can't not work twice. I mean, I'm at a hundred percent success rate on splitting the party. So I feel like Pluto doesn't do well on his own. You see, what I have the last time it's Sten. I mean, if you want to do that to the Queensman, that wouldn't be terrible. But... Stop bringing up Sten. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's a May soft... he rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, uh... a soft spot because he's goo. <laughs> <laughs> he's... Oh, <no. laughs> But the, you, you get a little panicked. I I don't like being alone. So don't <clears throat> don't leave me alone. Don't leave Pluto alone. We're in this together, bud. Thanks. Yeah, but I can like I'll 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 be I can always come in and be a distraction if we need to. Okay. Okay. Snay or change or I've got a bandana just. So just stay in case. close but far. Close but far. I put Clo the bandana on and literally change nothing else about myself. <laughs> but I do have a buzzed head. Are my eyes? Done glowing, yeah, they're, yeah. they're done glowing. Oh. What about should I wear a bandana? Will yeah. it help? Because I'm wearing like giant armor. Yeah, put it around the armor. Just yo, I'm a queensman. See, bandana. <laughs> okay, you they're the they're, they're not smart, right? Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna put on my bandana. I'm just making assumptions. <laughs> I yeah, it probably won't work, but I mean, it's from, you from afar, approach buckle down row. You can see that. There are, it's now the afternoon, and you can see, hear some hoots and hollers in the distance, and smell in the air a combination of sweat, booze, and desperation. Smells like my house. <laughs> oh, wait, don't they have the fighting pits close by? Remember the remember that's what the the old man said? Falling fire guy? Did he? He was like they have fighting pits. Mm. Did they? What you s notice Veo as you come into this area, you can see and Pluto after a while you no start to notice it too. Several of the second story buildings in this area it's a district that is mostly workshops, warehouses, stables, and broken down businesses as a spillover of the industrial district that was in the south ward of the city. And many of the second story buildings or warehouses, you can see they're 
cleverly disguised in the rubble, rubble, but there are very clear hidey holes, nests, and kind of lookout spots that have been constructed. It's like looking up at that window, you can see that, oh yeah, someone's pulled some netting across the window so that they can hide better making a sniper's nest or someone has at, <coughs> or that boarded over window across the street just has a perfect little arrow slit poking out of it you start to notice that th- there are clear signs that this whole area of buckle down row has been managed slightly that's why we're wearing the bandanas. Oh, so they won't know. If from far, if, like if they're trying to snipe us, they're going to see purple bandanas and strangers. Mm-hmm. I like that. Faye, are you staying in the shadows? I think I'm going to get up on the rooftops. <laughs> we like look in a sniper nest and it's just Veo. <laughs> oh, she's up there. Oh, cool. And I'll kind of keep an eye out from up top, but I'll try to stay behind the chimneys, mm. but know that my eyes are on you. Thank you. Looking down, buckle down row. You can see it's a longer bolo- longer kind of narrow boulevard cobblestone street that weaves its way through the spokes. And you can quite plainly see from the rooftops, Veo, that there are people coming in and out of the three taverns that were marked on your map. Only After only a few minutes of observation, the signs of them going, and in fact, outside one of the establishments... There's a group of people that are drinking, yelling, and having what sounds like a good time in the afternoon. There are people alive down here. I I didn't expect that. Sounds like a party. Hey. Ready to go party? My name's Sebastian Crow, and I like to party. (laughs) It's a great, great intro. (laughs) Yeah, tell them that. I'll come with you. Okay. Yeah. Wait, no. Shouldn't Wait, start with that. Would you like some Illyrian ale to get your party started? Yes. I hand you one of the bottles that I have. Oh. I say that'll make oh, it you're blend gonna... in a bit more. Oh wait, we're pretend to drink it. <laughs> oh, <It's> strong stuff. <laughs> um, Car- yeah, carry it with you. Yeah, you can meander down the street with that, and people won't even notice you. Deal. I'll fit right in. Mm. Uh, which bar should we head to? The busy one. When I see on the map, is there any of the specific bars marked off on the map? These There are other establishments along Buckle Down Row, mm-hmm. but these are the three that have been marked. Have been marked. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Um, which one do we hear is the rowdiest? Hmm. The most commosh. The most commosh. Most commosh. <laughs> That's the fun to largest say. of <laughs> the three yeah. is the snake and mongoose. But it seems like the most, there's some angry yells coming from the slaughtered lamb. That's our, that's our ticket. Anger equals. Party? Party anger. The, they might have the, the, the drunkest. Do we flip a coin about it? <laughs> uh, whatever sprinkles your donuts, I'm, I'm open for any. Let's flip a coin. All right. Heads is which one? Snake and mongoose. Whoa. Tails is the other one. Heads. Okay, that was easy. Snake, Snake and mongoose. mongoose. Snake and mongoose. So not the rowdier one, but the busier one. Bigger one. The largest one. The largest one. Okay. It's a good place to start. You head down the row. The snake and mongoose is a large tavern built around a single huge stone chimney. So that kind of rises up out of the center of the building and there's smoke coming from the chimney. Hmm. The building itself has a big set of double doors at the front of the establishment with some small steps leading up to it. But there's a porch on the north and the south end of the building outside. Collected on the porch are some broken down tables and chairs and what look like a few sleeping mats as well. 
And on the northern porch, there seemed to be about half a dozen gang members that are passing around a pipe and drinking from a bottle of what might be some kind of bootlegged ale. On the south porch, you can uh, smell what smells like someone cooking like a chili, maybe. Mm. And there are a few very daytime drunk looking members of the Queen's Band passed out as well on the on the south portion. Or they're they're just very sloppily sprawled over a pair of the benches. There's two of them there. Around the entrance, there have been stacked up several barrels, tables, and chairs, and bits of wire and some sharpened spears. Like all the entrances have been slightly defended in some way. And there's a few of the Queen's Men, a very large burly dwarf. And what you realize is a mat, not a half orc, but a massive bugbear with a pot belly the two of them outside the front door and all of them are wearing the the left arm thing the purple yep yeah, yeah. with the the purple band with the ro- the red red rose on it i at this point again go up on the rooftop and say pork chops if you need me i'll be keeping watch and i scurry up onto the closest roof behind a chimney Okay, what's her? What's her? Uh, we're on a we're on a pub crawl. Uh, yeah, you can pretend to be drunk. I can. And then uh, we'll walk up and Pop. we'll be we'll be sharing it back and forth, but like not really drinking it. Oh, <laughs> I just I mean a, I just took take a, a little sw- bit. Yeah, I took a big swig. Okay, well you're. Ready I mean, to go. the bottle can't be full when I walk up. No, no, it can't. But you could also pour it on the ground. <laughs> that would be a waste. You're okay, you know what? You sound like someone that needs to... <laughs> yeah, we'll talk right. about your problem after. <laughs> and then you take... I take a big swing. Well, I don't want to be left out. I don't yeah, want to be the only right, one. So are we just walking up and... Um... Okay, let... We'll go to the people in the north and see if we can get some of the... Gotta loosen up a bit yeah. now. You know? Whew. See how they're doing. All right. I'm ready. Uh... Run it. I approach the north patio. The people drinking and smoking. Okay. There's a group of gang members here. Some of them are wearing the Queen's Men bandanas. Others look like they might not be wearing a bandana or, or, or just some of them have kind of let themselves a bit loose. There's two halflings uh, that are very interested in each other at one side of the porch, keeping to themselves. There's another group of them, three more humans that are passing around the pipe, and a shaved-headed dwarf woman with uh, who seems to be hogging most of the booze. And as you approach, one of the uh, the the human men is saying, "Hey, lassie, give us some of that grog, then, eh?" And she reluctantly passes him the beer, and he swigs it back, and she snatches it back. Says, "You'll never leave enough for me." Hello. You guys ever tried a Lyrian one? I'm gonna grab the <laughs> bottle. Out of your hand. Out of the bottle. Hand, and uh, I'm going to kind of toss it to one of the guys. This will put some hair on your chest. Cool. You two can both make a deception check. Oh, no. Is the bottle closed? No. <laughs> it's got a, it's got the Stopper. the loose cog cork. 21. 15. Okay. The man catches it. He says, Where'd you get this piss? Obviously, Illyria it says so on the bottle. He takes a swig of it. Oof. It's not bad. 
That's my third bottle today. <laughs> Which outfit you boys with? The outfit. Sorry, I've had a lot. <laughs> See that? <laughs> you coming in for more or playing a game or what? I'm I'm just here to, to hang out. Um, yeah, we're going to play some games. What games are we playing today? We got dice, we got cards. They're all inside. Ooh. I'm proficient in cards. <laughs> Where's the cards table at? I'm sorry, what was your name? That's rude of me. Uh, I'm Mac. I'm Mac. He uh, goes around, introduces the, the the rest of the... the... the rest of the thieves that are with him. And they all just kind of... Eh. As you as you approach, who are you with again? I'm with my friend here. He's we're just here to drink. Come on, let's get you inside. Yeah, let's. I'm sorry. I, I'm gonna push him along. I need more, <laughs> so I can play cards. Have a good night, gentlemen, queens. Right. You you too. You too. All right. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Step in to <laughs> the bar. You come out, and right as you come in, in in the door, there is right beside you a large L-shaped bar, kind of curved on the one corner with several stools uh, loaded up around it. Um, and then right across from it on the other side of the room, there's another bar. So there's two both in the corners of, of the bar. There's a large hearth fireplace. And you can kind of see on the fireplace in the center that the other side of it is another fireplace that's in the what would be the kitchen. Um, and opposite the bars are the set of double doors, the main entrance, a set of stairs leading upwards, and what looks like a makeshift stage, uh, which has just been covered over with a few more tables and chairs. The place is packed. There could be at least two dozen, maybe more people in here all of them drinking shouting eating playing cards gambling and dice and you can see very clearly that that each of the tables have been all organized around a specific game of some kind as if they set this up as an impromptu casino there's two doors leading into interior rooms one that you can tell probably leads to a kitchen of some kind another perhaps to a storeroom uh-oh as I walk in, I listen at the yelling and shouting. I do, there's like a small chance of this, but does anybody happen to mention offhand a... Um, what was the question that he asked? Which uh, which unit are you with or which... Uh... Yeah, uh, looking for like identifying markers. Does anyone have any badges that go beyond their... their does anybody uh... say anything? Like, oh, you skull boys... There, Got nothing on us. As you scan the room, make a perception check, Pluto. Ooh. Uh, 18. There's a few individuals here that you can see that are keeping themselves to the sides. They're very clearly not drinking. And they all have their hands on their weapons. Uh -oh. You count them. Four, maybe five. You ready to play some cards? Yes. Where's the cards table? There's uh, a few of them. Where they're playing a and three card ante and a few other other games few people are screaming over the money that they've lost piling the coins out the coins and you can see that not only are they pi they betting with coins a few of them have pieces of delirium that they're betting with some of them are betting with bottles of booze and other things that they found in the ruins some of them are even get exchanging notes with each other that seem to be locations where they've hidden their their cash hmm. interesting um the uh it didn't look like 
anyone really paid us much attention when we walked in. If they did, they're deliberately trying to not to not make it obvious. Okay. Because it's pretty busy. You're going to sit down at the card table? I sit down at the card table. I'm going to watch from like maybe a table away. Sit down. I'm going to stand around and mill around. You got room for one more? Got room for one more. Calls at least ten, you in? Ten gold. Whew. A little rich for our blood right now. We're just, uh, if, no, no, silvers. Sorry, it's the Illyrian wine. I, uh, I got... If you want yeah. the high rollers table, you came to the wrong joint. No, I, I was relieved to hear that it's <clears throat> not gold. Not gold. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's the wine. I throw, I throw down, ten silvers, one gold, right? Yeah. Okay, I throw down a gold piece and sit at the table. Alrighty. They deal you in, um... Make me a, uh, a ch- are you proficient in card games? I am. Okay, let's see how you do. Is it just a d20 plus proficiency? Uh, yeah, but are you going to play smart or play tricksy? <laughs> I mean, oh, you know I mean, me. I mean, <laughs> um, we'll throw, we'll throw some tricksy in there. Okay, you can add your charisma modifier. Twenty-eight. All right. Uh, you basically manage to play a few rounds of cards, and you completely grift them for everything they're worth. <laughs> By you end up with no hands that were any good, but you basically bluff your way to success. As and after about four hands of this, um, one of the men that you're playing with, this um really kind of lanky but well muscled bugbear with a face just filled with dagger like dagger like teeth and a head that's like way too like as wide as as his shoulders and big floppy ears uh turns to you and and he says you keep lying your way to winnings we're gonna have a bit of a problem lion i'm just good at cards Sir? Good at cards. My rear end. It's just luck. And a few others try to try to calm him calm him down. Do you want some wine? He knocks the wine out of your hand. Waste. I am offended. <laughs> You've offended me. <laughs> I'm hurt. Wounded. In the midst of this veil, what are you doing? I have snuck up to the window, How much gold did I get? which is the north and south side on here. Is the staircase closest to which side? I'm the south. You're the south. Okay. Um, so actually, you know what? I've snuck up to um, the window. That's closed right now. Mm-hmm on the west side Mm -hmm. and I want to listen in snuck down in the shadows trying to hear if I can hear pork chops (laughs) okay you catch sight of Sebastian gambling away Mm -hmm. but you don't hear them say pork chops okay Pluto well Sebastian's gambling what are you going to do I'm just kind of keeping an eye on Sebastian I'm uh, just kind of minding my own business kind of just scanning the room um Trying to see if, like, either of these doors have any sort of suspicious, like, opening and closing. Are people coming in and out? You do. A, um... Large man comes up, comes up to you. Hello, large man. He's got a big, thick beard and an eye patch and a face that looks like he fell down the ugly tree and hit every branch along the way, and then the ugly tree fell on him, was hit by lightning, and caught fire. Oh. <laughs> you must know Sten. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a pretty man. He says to you, I know you. And who might you be? My name's Dempster. Smoky Dempster. 
Like like dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say that? Yeah. No, not like dumpster. <laughs> I get that all the time. It's the face. Oh, at least we don't have to beat around the bush anymore. But I, I know you. Well, who am I? Strong man, aren't you? I'm pretty strong. I know it when I see it. Might not have a face for looking, but I got a face for muscle. I see it in you. You can fight, can't you? I've, uh, I've been looking for a reason to mess up a pretty face. Not yours, obviously. <laughs> But no offense. <laughs> None taken. Dumpster. D dumpster. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, all this, all this, all this drinking without any brawling feels like kind of a waste. I can, I can feel myself looking for a reason to hit someone. Yeah. You think you can, uh, you can make it in the Queen's Arena? <laughs> make it. I could be the champion down there. Just champion. tell me where I gotta go. Yeah. If you're interested, you think you can go for it. If you make it one of the queen's champions, you get a twenty percent cut of the take instead of just the regular five that the rest of us all get. That's why I do it. I can help you get get there. What can you if do you're for me? Yeah. What can you do? We got some fights downstairs. You win there. Maybe you can win in one of the others. You get down to the Queen's Arena, then that's where the real money is. All right, where is it? Not without your herald. <laughs> Go to the back door. Talk to Blackjack Mel. Tell him you're spoiling for a fight. You want to break a few heads. He'll get you in the next fight. I crack my knuckles. Ow. <laughs> 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 no. um, uh, thanks, Dempster. <laughs> he wakes. <He> wakes. <laughs> and for a second, he's blind. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, go, <laughs> I go over and put my hand on um, uh, Sebastian's shoulder. Come on now. Up you go. We got, we got to get moving. <laughs> Pour it all into the bag of holding. Thanks, gentlemen. I am needed as I am a herald, and I must herald in the greatest champion that this fighting ring will ever see. And if we pick up any stray cats along the way who happen to want to meet us in the basement, you all stray cats can come join us there. For the show. <laughs> and Veo's just sitting there like, poor chops. <laughs> no, we're not in danger. Because Pluto will win this fight. <laughs> You're so drunk. <laughs> Come I, on, up you go. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Here, have a gold. How much did I win? Uh, you won 32 gold pieces. Whoa. The equivalent of. I, um, I, I flip the uh, bugbear one gold. And I'm like, sorry for the trouble there. And I get pulled away by Pluto. And we're going to head towards the, the 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 downstairs, the back door. Okay. I, seeing this, I'm like, I can't let them go into trouble without me. And I cast Disguise Self <laughs> to look human. <laughs> <laughs> what does human veo look like human veo has <laughs> she's weird because it's regular ears <laughs> black spiky hair almost like it just has an it's got its own gel that kind of <laughs> mm -hmm. spikes it up scrawny but a little bit shorter not quite you know like dwarf size but definitely shorter than she is and she's got a scar that goes across <laughs> her eye to make her look a bit tough. Uh, and she, I veo ties the, the, the bandana around her arm to make her look like a thief. She looks pretty scabby in her outfit. Uh, that's a bit more dark than she normally wears. Like normally veo has a little bit more like brown leather, but nope, she looks like a bum from the street. More bummer than she normally does. Uh, 
and I'm gonna go around to the front doors and burst them open. <laughs> Say, recruits, where do you think you're going? A. Eh? <laughs> Is some lady yelling at us? Talking to us? <laughs> oh, we've been found out. Anybody got any pork chops? <laughs> I have some pork chops. And she winks. This, this lady is freaking me out, Pluto. <laughs> Why did she say she has pork chops? Why is she wa she's walking towards us? What do we do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh, okay, um, just get ready. And I walk to towards him. I say, Point you can't go into the fights without your manager leading you. <laughs> What's your name? Vela. <laughs> Nailed it. Dude, you're doing great. Is Thanks. That, it's, it's, I'm it's obviously fail. your human manager, <laughs> Vela. Uh, Vela, it's about time you showed up. Yeah, Pluto's about to go into a fight. You gotta manage him, and I gotta herald him. These newbie thieves think they could just go in the ring without their manager. <laughs> Get in there now that I'm here. <laughs> Go. <laughs> and I big wink again. <laughs> Does anyone, is anyone paying attention to us? Some people are, but there's more <laughs> looks of, um, when they realize what you're talking about, there's a general commotion in the room and they're like, so, uh, and one of the thieves turns to you and says, you three going to go down and fight. Yeah. Well, he's going to fight. I'm going to just introduce him, and she's going to manage him. My recruit's going to fight, eh? Yeah. We're putting all of our money on, uh... Seems a little boring. We like to see a little bit of a battle royale down here. Oh, it won't I, be boring. I'm not a scrappy sort of fella. I'm pretty scrawny, and I've had way too much wine. Well, if you're just spoiling for the one-on-one, the one-on-ones, then, you, be, you might want to head over to the Skull and Sword. Down here, we do it three versus three versus three versus three. Uh, uh, question. Is magic allowed? Winner take all. I'm in. Do we go downstairs? I guess as your manager, <laughs> recruits, <laughs> I should probably lead the charge. Thank you, manager. <laughs> Mrs. Manager. Vela. That's right. What was your name again? Uh, I think you just straight up called me Pluto. No, nope. That was that was the wine. <laughs> this is the wine again. It's a wine thing. My name is D'Artagnan. <laughs> he hasn't quite come up with his thief name yet, you know. It's Deb. <laughs> My thief name is yeah, I'm right. Deb, and I'm Knife Gut Pete. <laughs> there, a better thief name. Right, you three. Man, I wish I had Knife Gut. I'm Pete Blackjack and Mel, and Deb, and I run the fights down here. You understand how this all works? You knife him in the gut, and you, you win him. some gold. You deb him. Here's the deal. Down here, we fight for real. You want to fight? You can give up if you're lucky. But you don't have to hold back nothing if you don't want to. Everyone that goes into this, well, you put down what you want. And you walk away with everything everyone else puts down. Deal. Well, what's his name? Black Jack Mill? Blackjack Mel. Blackjack Mel? Yeah, that sounds fair. You gotta be able to put down at least 25 gold each if you want to enter. Guys, I just won so much gold from that whole table. I glance back at the angry bugbear. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I have 25 gold. I have it, but it could be spent on food. <laughs> if you win, you get the pot. Plus, a share of the bets. If you lose, you might die. 
Cool. We, we never lose. Wait. I think so. Give me one second to talk to our champion and our manager. <laughs> What's in this for us? Like, what are we? Are, we're trying to figure out a way into the Queen's men's hideout. Should we just like make buddies with them? If we win, no, that's it. If we win, don't we get to see the Queen. No, then maybe, maybe they'll like be like, let's all go back to the hideout, gang, and we'll be like, yeah, and we'll just walk with them home. Sounds good. Is there any chance that they know who we are and they're just going to try to trap us and try to? murder us potentially that's a potential but i think i think that we are so good at disguises right now I mean, nobody I, suspects a thing yeah you guys didn't even suspect that i was yeah. me vela yeah me. that's you're really good veo thank you vela vela and uh Fella. deb and knife gut pete <laughs> deb. <laughs> deb deb <laughs> all right yeah we're in deb's in. all right you're in eh they take you downstairs, down a set of dank stairs into the basement of the Snake and Mongoose, where what might have once been a large undercroft of some kind has been cut, filled with sand and converted into a fighting pit. And there are several, um, it's a big round room that's all supported up top. They fill the whole room with sand along the bottom. There's bits of bone and blood all in the sand. And then there's just a, a gaggle of makeshift bleachers all around the room. Um, you come down the stairs. It looks like there's like a storeroom off to, and they, they bring you through what was kind of a concealed door in the storeroom to get down in here. And as you come down, a bunch of the other gang members from up top also start coming down as well. Um, and in in here, as you enter the room, you can see that there's already been fights here this morning of various groups of, of them. They're kind of dragging off some guy's corpse as you as you enter the room. And there's another exit off the whole fighting pit where they drag the corpse and you just hear like this throwing sound and a splash <laughs> and the, 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 the smell of sewage briefly fills the room before they shut the door that, that's where the bodies go <laughs> where the fish people get them. follow the bodies we could follow the fish people we could also like this could be our way back in here you know, if we ever wanted to go through the corpse hole. There is one other exit in this room. It's a closed door. Where it leads to? Don't know. So there's the stairs in. There's two other exits. The one that seems to be where they're throwing the corpses. Hmm. Keep that in mind. We have a couple ways out. In case things get squirrely. Hmm. There is... A set of cheering as you come down and Blackjack Mel speaks up. All right, you lot. I've got three more for the slaughter. Who's up next? think we've got enough now to do another match. By the way, guys, uh, I have an hour until I turn back into a cat. So uh, let's make this. Let's kill him quick times. Chop, chop. Okay. <laughs> chop, chop. Okay. Let's get ready to fight. So he, Blackjack Mel comes into the center of the room. And now a bunch of the others from up top have filtered down into the fighting pit. They're all taking up positions on stools and benches and barrels all surrounding the room. And there is a small um, senile looking gnome with a piece of chalk that's writing that's starting to write like a scoreboard on one of the walls and blackjack mel speaks up and says all right here's the rules 12 are gonna go in three four teams of three for those of you that get that count count ask one of your buddies i know a lot of you have trouble counting as far as three it's and tough. It's tough. 
you there, two fingered Pete. I'm very sorry that you. <laughs> oh, another uh, Pete. It's all right, Pete. Hi, Pete. I'm drawing the sand. I'm what? A knife gut, Pete? I don't know. I don't know my name. We just call you Knife Gut. Knife Gut. All righty. So, here's who we got. Who are you three? What's your names? I'm Deb. D- knife Gut Pete. Vela. We're going to call you the fresh meat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Yeah, that's what I ate for dinner. Nice. He writes fresh meat up on, on the top. It's like, all right, who's in for fresh meat? And some people bring, like, start putting their bets. We're going to put the odds here at four to one. I'm trying to, like, get, like, I'm, like, going up to the crowd, like. And then he, uh, he introduces. The Herald. Our Herald. I kick someone. Um, <laughs> Stepping out of one of the, the like corners of the room is a bugbear, a hobgoblin, and a goblin. Um, uh oh. All right, you three are going to be the greenies. Set the odds at two to one, and people start betting on. And the 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 uh, the uh, bugbear, the hobgoblin, are all pumping themselves up. The uh, bugbear is wearing leather armor, carrying a big club. The hobgoblin has chainmail armor, a sword, and a shield, and the goblin has a small bow. Then he, uh, then three dwarves step forward, um, all of them women, and all of them have braids and hammers. And he says, "We'll call you three the short stacks." <laughs> Writes them down. I feel bad about killing these. We're going to put the odds at five to one. God, are we just going to murder these people? We're going to murder nine people. Probably. Um, <laughs> and then finally, there are three human, uh, three human bandits that uh, step up. And they're, one of them's carrying a shield. Another has a orange mohawk. Uh, and the third has a pair of razor sharp daggers, and they say, "We're the razors, yeah." And Blackjack Mel just nods, like, "All right, whatever." <laughs> Not impressed with their intro. We'll set the odds at two to one. What? We have, and then there's a bunch of people that are arguing, like, "Those odds are don't add up," and people are like, "This is unfair," and there's a general commotion as all the the. The patrons argue over Blackjack Mel's really oddly set odds that he's been laying down for the bets. And they go over several times trying to decide exactly how to set all the odds and eventually agree on them. Uh, And many bets start to get placed as well. Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to put 10 gold on us. Don't we already have 25 gold each in? Right. I'm not going to put any (laughs) more. Put more, put more. I mean, if you want. No, I'm good, I'm good. I pay uh, my twenty five. So who are we fighting first? I try to say it's a right. free for all. What? Yeah, we got to stick last, together. Last last team with at least one person standing's the winners. What? So guys, I'll I'll stand in the front. You guys shoot everything over top of me. I need we you do to it, pump me up. And we do it one at a time as things come. I'm Only never, rule: I've never you been can't afraid. hurt the crowd, but the crowd can hurt you if they want to. What? No. I mean, I mean yeah, totally. Acceptable in regular oh, fighting. Oh, can you leave the... What if you get knocked out of the ring? There's no ring to get knocked out of. <gasps> oh, okay. Perfect. That makes sense. Now, we may be now, fresh meat. if you're too worried that you're going to die, all you need to do is put your hands on your head and start screaming in a high-pitched voice, I surrender, I surrender, I'm a brave little... Uh, I'm not a... I am a cowardly little wiener. Okay, and then that might let you live. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's his battle cry. <clears throat> okay, I won't. I'll say it once, and then I won't say it ever again. <laughs> All right, I think we're we're ready. Yeah, I'm not afraid. I am afraid. We may be the fresh meat, but you never asked her how she got her scar. <laughs> and this guy, I've seen him kill a troll with his bare hands. What have you lot done? Nailed it. Intimidated. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. 
Um, yeah, we should kill the bugbear first. We should kill. We should find whoever's the biggest guy and kill him, and then just work our way down. Uh, I've never really been in a planned free fight, <laughs> a free for all with other people. That I usually I murder people who have done wrong. Like, are, are these all queensmen? Yeah. And uh, are we right. all starting in different corners? Yeah. Oh. It's a round room, but they all set, like you, you're set, in, like set, set you up set. In, in separate oh, sides. Okay. Did they close the door to upstairs? Yes. I can right. throw someone through the corpse hole. You said there was two levels. No, there there isn't. the The room itself is only about sixty feet wide. Okay. And everybody's sitting around the outside at, uh, edges of the room, watching the fight. In the middle, so there's like a, a ring of a, of about thirty people watching this whole fight go down in this really cramped quarter. What does the ceiling look like? The ceiling vaults up and curves. It's it only reaches a height of about twenty, not twenty feet actually, probably more like twelve feet. What's it made out of? Stone. Hmm. Did you get more of the vial? Did you get more of the goo? Yeah, I, I got a fight. <laughs> <laughs> now that we know what it does, cool. it's just not throw, terrible. Play. Throw goo at someone. Uh, so I'm gonna blast these guys with spells, right? Yeah. What if I hit some of the audience? Then that's probably gonna get you in trouble. So what if I hypnotic pattern the audience? That doesn't hurt them. No. Okay. How about darkness? Zoom. Hmm. Okay. Oh, where are the lights coming from in here? There are several torches along the, the sides of, of the room. <laughs> I'm worried. I'm <laughs> pumped up. Okay. Blackjack Mel gets everybody out in the sides of the room, pulls up his coat, slicks back his greasy hair, says, all right, you lot, remember... Don't go easy on each other. And that goes for all you all as well. Pointing at the at the spectators. You all ready? Sure. Roll for initiative. Does he say that? <laughs> oh, goodness. That's, that's not going to go well. <laughs> With advantage, I rolled a one and a two. Guys, we're, we're going last. Oh, I rolled a 19. <laughs> Okay. Oh. <laughs> Me and Pluto are too busy, like, trying to pump each other up. We don't realize that the, like, I'm giving rub. you an impromptu back rub, and, uh, it, I didn't realize the fight started. Yeah. I need, I need, I need, like, some positive vibes, man. And you're like, it's okay. You got this. I'm going to do one initiative count for each of the entire team, the other teams, but you guys will all have your own. What do we got? 19. 19 for Veo? Four. Four. Three. Okay. <laughs> so it's going to be. Veo, everyone. Sorry, Pluto got the three? Yeah. Sebastian. <laughs> okay. So Veo will go first, then the Razors, then the Greenies, then the Short Stacks, then Sebastian and Pluto. I like to bring up the rear. Okay. Veo. What are you going to do? I... Sorry, go ahead. Um, I immediately take out my bow and aim for the bugbear. <laughs> <laughs> that seems appropriate. I'm like, I'm taking out the big guy first. Okay. Um, I mean, obviously, the second biggest guy. Because I'm the biggest guy. Are you? I'm Deb. Um, and I'm going to use my, um, my Dread Ambusher, uh, to give me, um, my additional weapon attack. I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Zephyr Strike. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, let's set a new record. <laughs> set a new, new record. Records. Let's see that bugbear survive. <laughs> a Veo attack. Vela. Vela's attack. 17. 17 to hit. Okay, let's see. The bugbear tries to raise his shield to block the strike, but it goes right past it. it it's it's a hit. Oh, <laughs> okay, oh, so uh, D8 is regular. D8 for Zephyr Strike. 
d8 for dread ambusher and a d6 because i get advantage on my sneak attack And just for all y'all wondering, um, the I did not know what to expect from these three tonight, so I have no map prepared. <laughs> so we're doing theater of the mind. <laughs> just imagine yeah. forty yeah. damage. Oh god, <laughs> four zero. Yeah, as long as I did my mental. That leaves him bloodied, but he is still alive. <laughs> Do you get another attack? Two more. <laughs> Good. Well, don't stop, won't stop. Uh, yep, okay. I was also thinking, like, oh, uh, enlarge 20. Me. That hits. <laughs> this one will be less. I think this is good That's one. funny. It's so funny. 17 damage. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> My last. A crit. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just got pelted <laughs> by so many arrows. <laughs> Sorry, my mental math. 25 damage. So that, for those of you keeping track at home, that was... 85 damage total. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, 80, 82 damage total. <laughs> leaving this guy at negative 17. <laughs> so what happens? Um, I get him in the chest. Oh, the Boromir. I get him. Yeah, literally. It's like it's going up, but eventually I end it right between his eyes. Chest, neck, eyes. Yeah. Oh. So this massive bugbear, the biggest guy in the ring, just gets shot three times right off the cuff. Yes. And goes down with a large thump, and he falls forward on the arrows, and they all shoot out the back. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and the crowd just goes crazy, yeah! immediately cheering. And I start screaming, like I, I do, like a, like a roar. We like think we already won. We're like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. That's how I give other people scars. <laughs> I think that's more than a scar. I think. Hey. <laughs> Human power. I feel so powerful now. I'm like, come at me. You guys got nothing. Like wow. Gonna make us targets. <laughs> that was gross. I'm I'm so confident now. I'm just like yelling. Okay. I'm, I'm chirping. All of them. Seeing this, the razors are shocked. And the three of them immediately dash towards your group aggressively. Um, the, fir the first one dashing forward using their cunning action oh. to close the gap to towards Veo. And as he does so, the others take, their, uh, take out knives and the first guy it's almost happening like simultaneously. He goes in low to slash at you, Veo, getting a ten to hit. Nope. And a nine to hit. Nope. I jump. And as you jump backwards, his other two teammates take out their knives, and a whistle of four daggers are sent flying towards you. Oh. Getting a nineteen. Yes. A 17. Yes. A 9. Nope. And a 6 to hit. So two hit. Two hit. Two daggers. Ooh. And they almost push you back perfectly, and they land their sneak attacks, getting a grand total of... So the first attack does 16 damage and the second does 12. Oh, As geez. they throw their whistling daggers out towards you, 
the two of them that threw threw their knives taking taking point at the center of the ring. Mm. The other right up against you. With that, we go to the greenies, who seeing the biggest one amongst them go down, do they bre- do, do they break their nerve? No. They don't. They're furious. Uh-oh. <laughs> The goblin and the, uh, hob- the gobla- hob- goblin, goblin and the goblin and the uh, hobgoblin, uh, and the I'm hobgoblin cries out, "Buster, no! <laughs> I'll kill you!" And he also rushes towards Veo, um, but he can't Certainly quite close right. the distance, so he throws his javelin at you. Mm-hmm. Getting a 12 to hit. No. Okay. And the goblin shoots at you. Getting a 12 and an 8 to hit. Nope. Oh, this okay. is going well for uh I feel like I'm in the Pluto Matrix. Nine. Yeah, you're do- dodging and taking all the, the You shots. made a lot of friends. <laughs> Meanwhile, of though, the, uh, the short stacks charge towards the men in the center of the room and all three of them just batter their attacks on one of the guys that threw the daggers at Veo and they (laughs) they clobber him to the ground and end up the two of them swing their hammers around crash his head in from the side and cave it in and he falls over dead um gross (laughs) We can now go to Sebastian. Uh, um, so how many people are... No, they're not based with Veo. They were throwing stuff at her. Uh, but all of the enemies are like in front of Veo, right? Um, no. The bugbear mm-hmm. is in the center of the room. Well, he's dead. He, uh, sorry, the bugbear is very dead. The, dwarf, the dwarven women with their hammers and their braids are in the center of the room clobbering the two men, the men that were in the middle as well. There's one of the two men is right up, up against Veo, the goblin's where he started, and the hobgoblin is charging towards you all as well. Um, I move up to Veo, and I look at her and I'm like, cover your eyes, it's about to get weird. And um, <laughs> <laughs> my eyes turn black And this, like, oozing darkness erupts from my body in a group of snakes that start to coalesce in the air and form this hypnotic pattern. (laughs) And um, the group in the middle, the dwarves and the other, the razors, um, I'm going to target all of them. Cool. Hypnotic pattern. All the dwarves fail their saving throws. (laughs) Uh, and the razor gets a wow. They all fail. <laughs> They're all hypnotized yeah. by it. All right, guys, we can deal with that later. I like my eyes return back to normal as the snakes get sucked back into me. Can I open my eyes? Yeah. Cool. Pluto, you're up. Oh wow. Um, I run over to Veo, <gasps> and, all... and I just I just bring my my sword down right on on the back of this razor. Cool. They're going to stay on me for a second. That's bugging you. And I get a one. <laughs> Wait, so the one that I just hypnotized? So he slides forward. No, he, this wasn't the okay. one that was hypnotized because one of them was right up to there. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, so I miss. Yeah, I just land in the sand. Uh, I bring it up and I swing again for uh, a 19. Nice. That is a hit. And uh, I'm going to use... Maneuvering attack. So I'm going to do 14 damage. Okay. And uh, Veo, if she wants, she can move up to half her movement. That leaves him bloodied. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to slam him into the ground uh, with a 13. He falls prone. And I stand over him. And I shift away. Kind of keeping everybody in the center um, to the side in order to make sure. But I also want to make sure I'm not total back to the crowd. So I'm kind of like shifting over away so I'm not melee, but um, far enough away that I can use my longbow. Cool. We go to the top of the round with Veo. Um, I'm going to 
I continue to use my longbow uh, for two shots at... I'm going to go with the the rest of the Greenies team. What's left is a... a Hobgoblin. The Hobgoblin and the Goblin. And the Goblin. I'm going to go for the Hobgoblin. Cool. Oh. <laughs> Six. As a miss. Second shot. Ooh. Uh, 19. Sail, uh, the arrow crashes right through his shield. Uh oh. <laughs> 24 damage. And penetrates his heart. <laughs> and he falls over dead. Two for two, guys! <laughs> Nothing can handle like one of your arrows. The biggest guy was pretty much down on two shots. Like you're, You did 17 damage, I think, on one of those hits, right? Yeah. Yeah, so like he, he only took two arrows, really. Yeah. The third one is just for fun. <laughs> just for flair. I do have lots of fun. Oh my god. Um and when I look around, do I see any openings in the crowd? Or are they all they're really packed, pretty tight? They're pretty packed in. Why do you want to hide in the crowd? No, I was gonna see if I could get through to start to put out the lanterns or the, the torches, but I will stay in the in the group. Covering okay. my guys with Thanks. my longbow. All of us back to back. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm standing over the razor. Next guy. up, I've got the razors. So this this guy, he clamors to his feet. And he tries to go at you with his knives. Hi. Getting a 19 and a 13 to hit. Uh, both miss. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, bud. Gracie's 20 now? Yeah. yeah, it is. Oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> nice. So you, you block both the attacks as he rises to his feet and tries to penetrate your defenses and just cannot. Um, the other is hypnotized, and there's just a lonely goblin remaining in the greenies, and he says, I'm a coward. I'm a coward. I'm a weenie. I'm a weenie. I surrender. <laughs> That's the appropriate response. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he gives up. Does that mean we won? Um, well, the like, are, they, are they forfeit for being that team? I think the crowd is start starts seeing, starts crying out, blood, blood, <laughs> blood, 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 blood. Wait, blood. I think they're talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are the blood? <laughs> they want us to <sighs> draw the blood. Draw blood. It's Pictionary. I usually don't murder unless it's necessary. Who am I kidding? I've killed like millions of gnolls. <laughs> I've I shot what's his name with a warning shot that killed him. Um, what? I don't know. <laughs> what do you What do you guys? Follow your heart. There's others we can take out. Leave him for last. I'm standing on like beside a guy. I guess it's my my turn. Mm -hmm. Is there still razors, right? Yeah. Uh, who's there's the razor that's awake? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna scorching ray him. <laughs> Zap. So I'm like I look at him and I'm like, sorry man, audience wants blood, and then I pull out my finger guns and I wild west. Pew pew pew. That's the sound I make. Oh, and it doesn't go well. Um I got a twelve. That does hit. Whoa. Okay. Second shot. More than a 12. Third shot. 11? That's a miss. Okay. So two shots hit. Oh, cool. 18 damage. The barrage of scorching beams tear through his flesh. And he falls to the ground in a crisp heap. And then I turn to the audience and... I'm <laughs> like, blood, blood, barbecue. <laughs> so that's like duck, duck, goose, but... Yeah. At I, this point, barbecue. the remainder of them are at your mercy. Will you kill them and give the audience their blood? Or will you spare them? Uh, quick aside, we're thieves. My name's Deb. My name's Knife Gut Pete, and I want to fight these folk another day. 
as Vela, the human. <laughs> Convincing. <laughs> I think that they don't deserve to die, the cowards. They Do don't you not have a proper challenger? For us? More, more! All the, the crowd begin to cry out, We want more! We want to see more blood! More of a challenge! And, like, people are all crying out that, like, They were weak! They could not stand their power! The short stacks. Huh. The razors. You should change our name from fresh meat to old meat. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well-aged, well-aged meat. Well, smoky meat. I didn't even get. To, I wanted to say something like, mm. "I'm gonna Debbie down you," and I was gonna hit someone, but <laughs> porterhouse. <laughs> How do we become the, the? What is it? The queen's? The, what's the queen's? Fight? To show a sign of uh, of dominance, I grab the hobgoblin's or the bugbear's body, and I throw it into the corpse hole. <laughs> <laughs> it washes into the sewer. Just throw it away. in. Uh, Blackjack Nell into steps into the crowd and says, Well, there you have it! Mercy from this horrible band of killers. You are certainly not fresh meat anymore, but have made mince meat of your enemies <laughs> and spared these three hypnotized dwarves. Never let that happen to me, he, he starts commenting. <laughs> Noted. Where's our money? That was a little too easy for the three of you. you cert we certainly underestimated your stock. We will pay out to all of you, certainly. But I think we wa we gotta see more from these three, don't we, boys? And they all start cheering. Yeah, more! Maybe we gotta send you over to the Split Skull. They got some nice beasties over there you might be able to fight. You down for it? Yeah. I'm Debbie down. Did it work now? <laughs> it worked. Yeah, Deb. I'm Deb. <laughs> Listen, I can see y'all got some real talent. Stick with me. You'll go far. And that's where we'll end for the night. Ooh. How much money do we make? Guys, we're joining the Queen's men. Yeah, I think we just found our new passion. <laughs> <laughs> Like, forget it. We're just joining the Fight Club here in here in the Drakenheim Drakenheim Fighting Pits. We're so good at it. Yeah, this is actually our calling. Like, we're running around trying to build factions. Like, murder. I mean, like murder. people in a ring. Well, actually, technically, Veo's the best at it. Uh, I'm sorry. Who neutralized half that combat? Well, no, you did great. It's just that, like, did you see her? <laughs> What was it, 85 damage? Uh, 82. 82. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you may have killed the uh, troll, but 40, I killed the uh, bugbear in for 17 one turn. And a, a hit for 25. Like, I'm just going to let, yeah, it's just all about how much damage can we get Veo to do. <laughs> and then we're going to kind of try to keep beating that record. The new record's 82. Write 82, down. One, one turn. And I'll find ways to just keep giving you advantage. And just hitting <laughs> things harder and harder. <laughs> like, that's the game now. Yeah, uh, lovely time. So we will pick this up where we left off next week and see if our merry band can continue their awesome winning streak in Drakenheim. And somehow this will get us into the Queen's... What was it? I hope I hope like weeks pass and we lose our we lose track of what our goal was. We're just... The weeks have passed. I lost track of who I was in the arena. Forgetting... <laughs> And all that blood, the man I used to be. <laughs> Pluto Jackson's just a name in the wind. Deb. I'm Deb now. <laughs> I'm Deb now. Vela. Knife gut Pete. Oh, I can't wait for you to turn back into a cat halfway through. <laughs> I have two more spell slots. It's okay. No, you need those for... Um... We need to rest between our battle. <laughs> yeah, at some point I'm going to run out of spells and I'm going to need a rest. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so we are going to wrap up there. A big thank you, as always, to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe, a.k.a. Sebastian, Paluto, and Veo, for playing the game tonight. Uh, and a huge thank you as well to Kyle for keeping chat under control, running everything behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, 
we could not do it without him. He's, and thank you so much, Kyle. And a big thank you to Clayton, who's on vacation somewhere right now. Yeah, he's in Jamaica. Yeah, it's his wife's birthday, yeah? Yeah. yeah. He just Aww. decided to go to Jamaica for his just wife's birthday. Decided. Uh, he went to the same resort I went to. Very jealous. Yeah? Was it, is it good? I, it good? I, I enjoyed it. Nice. Sounds good. Warm. Uh, if you are enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, please check out our Patreon. You can follow the links below, or you can find it at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes, and then come hang out with us in our Discord server, for the patrons it's been such a cool place everything from character building chat and more we've been talking about campaign advice and we have a secret chat where the cast cannot see the discord chat so you can talk about all the behind behind the scenes stuff in the campaign if you're curious why i made any decisions if you want to know how i built certain things in drakenheim if you're wondering about things like that that is the place to be to ask those kind of questions but of course there's lots happening in our discord chat as well including i think a group got started yeah there's now a a offshoot of our discord that is people playing a discord based D &D game yeah that is is really that is so cool that's so cool and of course as always kelly and i post new videos every thursday on our youtube channel just straight up dungeon dudes where we cover everything dungeons and dragons uh you can find advice for dungeon masters there and guides for players we have our new video this week on getting your players to role play yes indeed we had lots of great role play tonight it's yeah really it's a good yeah, balance good and point. if you're wondering like how we got this started of, of course for us we've been playing together for a long time and we've kind of figured out what has worked for us. So it's just kind of our tips and tricks of how we got everybody on the whole role play more bandwagon being a little less metagamey and really getting into our characters. So we just kind of talked about some of our advice and I think it's a, it's a good one. I, I like yeah, it. Yeah, I think I it's a good episode. So check that out. It's going to drop on Thursday. You can also find all prior 20 episodes of Dungeons of Drakenheim right up there for your viewing pleasure there as well. This will drop on YouTube on Friday. So if you just jumped in partway through, you didn't catch the whole episode, you're wondering how they got to this moment, check it out on YouTube. It's all going to be there on Friday. Uh, tonight's game session, as Monty uh, pointed out before, was uh, audio by Tabletop Audio. Are I saying words? I just said a bunch of words. <laughs> Tabletop audio, check it out. It's free. It's fun. And thank you very much to Hundred Years Bora for that amazing voiceover on our intro video. Such a good voice. Amazing. And thank you so much to Axe and Shield, who provided the initiative tracker that you saw today. He makes a ton of cool accessories, so please check it out. We use Terrain by Dwarven Forge and Miniatures by Hero Forge and Wiz Kids. And of course, the show is sponsored by Dungeons of Dragonheim. That 85 damage, that 80. Uh, dice. Skull, Skull, Skull Splitter Dice do, is the official sponsor of Dungeons of Dragonheim. That 85, 82 damage didn't come from nowhere. It was rolled on some Skull Splitter Dice. Skull With that crit. Yeah. Oh, that yes. crit to finish. So it, 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 crit. Yeah. Crits to kill. <laughs> Indeed. So make sure that you head on over to SkullsplitterDice.com. In just a few moments, you'll also be able to enter our giveaway at Skull Splitter Dice. You can use the discount code DDUDES at checkout to save 15% off your order. And our giveaway will be going live shortly after this episode is over. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim. <laughs>